Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Jenny I Vlog. Welcome to a new year. Happy 2025. So I thought to kick off this new year with an interesting episode diving into our latest package, Wing Agent X. So it's a Python package that's pip installable and it allows you to essentially make tool calling based on any tools that you want. What that essentially means is having agent executing Python function on your behalf. But here's the question. Why can't we just go to Microsoft AutoGen? Their package is also open source, and they also allow you to build agentic AI. What really is the difference? The difference comes down to how you resolve the dependency of your customized API. For example, when you have a problem with key value pairs or input arguments or sample payload in your own functionality, how do you know and how do you have the agent to fill that up for you if all this information is not present in your database, or if the agent needs to come back to you to ask you how to fill up these questions, right? So that is the interesting question that we're trying to answer here, hence the novel package being introduced in this video. So here's a system diagram. Let's briefly click in there. Let's start from the beginning. So user try to start a conversation saying, hey, look, I want to do X, Y, Z, right? Here's a certain task. Immediately, there's an LLM. This is kind of considered as the main chatbot that needs to classify the intent into certain categories. For example, uh, are we just chit-chatting, right? Or are we actually executing a function call? So upon the successful classification being done here, the step number one, the intent classifier agent is then able to tell the system, say, hey, look, we are actually not just chit-chat at all. We're actually going into a function call. So if that is the case, we're going to actually go into our database to grab the APIs, which of course we can customize API, we can define it however we want. And then there's actually a dependency resolution agent to resolve the dependency of those APIs, right? Every API has sample payload. The sample payload need to be checked. The dependency need to be checked. What if one API requires certain package that is in conflict dependency? of the dependency of another function, right? How do we do that? So this is when things get really interesting because this dependency resolution agent needs to go into a history, right? Some sort of database uh, conversation history with the user uh, or something that saved in the user profile in your database. If you're running a CRM, customer relationship management, right? This is the kind of API that we can go. So. You can think of that as a librarian agent. So dependency resolution agent is going to now talk to the librarian agent and say, hey, look, you know, we're trying to execute this function, but this is the required dependency. This is the required sample payload. Do we have these information? The librarian agent is going to then check the library or check the database and say, hey, look, maybe we have some of them, uh, some of them we don't, right? For example, maybe information one and two, we do have, uh, but information number three, it's required by the function, by the API call, but perhaps we do not have that information. Uh, if that is the case, then the dependency resolution agent is going to grab that information, say, hey, look, you know, we have one and two, but information number three from user, we don't have, we need to ask that, right? So the toss the question back to the LLM, and then the LLM is actually going to send back to the user. And here, you can see here that actually starts a loop, right? Because this info three could be right, could be wrong. Uh, if it's simple information, such as name, address, right? Uh, these things maybe user can enter correctly, uh, but if this gets complicated, right? Let's say uh, there's some sort of uh, a user ID number that's maybe 20 digit long, something like that, uh, there could be a chance, uh, such as a caveat situation, like an edge case that user got it wrong. Uh, so that's why here's a loop. We're going to have a loop uh, allowing the user to submit this information completely using natural language, get that information back, and the intent processor is going to know that it's related to a function call, and then it's going to try to check the required payload, right? And obviously saving the event stream, things like that. So if this process is successful, uh, then we can invoke the API, right? So after the API is invoked, then we can go back to the user and then we can say, hey, this is done. Like, let's set aside in the event stream, in the history, API is then complete. The task is then complete. 
So that is a system diagram on a high level, and that's exactly what this package is doing. And that is how this package is designed differently from the common agentic AI framework out there, such as Microsoft AutoGen. So with that being said, let's then dive into the code. And first of all, let's introduce a fancy function such as Yahoo Finance. For example, here's a Python notebook here that allows you to install Yahoo Finance. And then perhaps you can then generate some sort of PDF. Like there's a ticker you can enter, and then maybe you can grab some information, uh, grab the sector, the website, things like that. Couple of data, right? You can make an API call, right? That simulates that action. And then you can pack everything together to generate some sort of report. Uh, here I'm using the FPDF package to then generate a PDF file. And then this end of the day, give me a .pdf file locally in my directory. So let's say this function is there. Your ML team or your financial analyst team provided this API to you. How do you then build this into the agentic framework? So let me take you to the GitHub repo, and then let me give you a peek of how this function is designed. Let's go to list of API, and then let me show you the function called the generate financial report. So this generate financial report, first of all, needs a decorator to register that as a function. That's how it works. Is It's actually going to take this name as a string and then turn it into a function. So that's what the decorator is doing. And then it takes a couple of things as input argument. Uh, first of all, payload. Payload is what the algorithm needs to know to submit into the function as an input argument. And this payload also is where the uh, large language model is going to interact with the user to know if uh, we need to ask the user for information that the event stream doesn't have or not. And then on top of that, there's a secret, right? Whatever API key token you want to send in, that's what the secret store. And last but not least, you have an event stream, which carries the entire history of the conversation. But once it's being instantiated. So uh, the functions here, uh, nothing really fancy, right? No, we're not talking about something truly, right? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. We got a ticker. Uh, we want to save PDF. We want to send an email. Uh, here's the email too. And then the rest of the code is to essentially extract the data from the Yahoo Finance, which is making a live API call. And then we have a helper function here to format data uh, so that we can pack everything into a PDF. And at the end of the day, uh, since the send email is triggered, uh, if it is triggered, we will then send the email out using Pi email. So that is the design of the function. Of course, we don't want this to be built behind some sort of a user interface. We don't want user to execute this as a Python engineer. We want user to use natural language to interact with this function and execute this function on behalf of a user. Right? So that's the magic thing about agentic AI. Any function that you can design, you can have user to use natural language to fill in all these payload and to execute it on your behalf. So let's take a look how that works. So for example, I already have the sample code here. You just need to install the package, fill in your API key. That is really it. So this is one function that's already been defined here. Let's just execute it. So let's start a conversation. Let's say, tell me a joke. This is obviously chit chat, right? It's not going to execute any API call. So is that a joke? Right? Sure, here it goes. Why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything, right? And then there's no API found in this event stream, clicking because it is not a function call. It is a chit chatting. Nothing's really happening in this conversation. Now, let's say I want to generate financial report. So I can say I want to generate a financial report of a company. Now, this actually found some sort of trigger, right? Generate company report, that is a trigger word. And the intent now says that, hey, we know what you're trying to do. You are trying to run this function because you said something that's connected with the trigger word in our system. And of course, as you imagine, trigger word, uh, you can pretty much handcraft it or you can use large language model to give you a giant list of different combination of trigger words. You got it, right? So now it's going to ask you for ticker. Now, the large language model here knows to ask this question because none of us have talked about anything about the ticker. Yet, to execute this function, a ticker is required. So 
let's enter a ticker. Let's say Apple, right? A A P L, and then it asks you, hey, you want a PDF or not? Right? Say PDF. So I say true. And next question says, hey, do you want to send an email? Sure. Let's send an email. True. And the last question is, where do you want to send to? Right. So I'll just use my personal email as an example. And then here we go. Enter. Now it says generating PDF for this. Done. Email successfully sent to this email address uh, with this name, right? So apple underscore report dot PDF. We are done. Uh, you can check the directory. You can see that this apple report dot PDF is generated. Now you can see that this is actually sent zero minutes ago, right? It's a sample PDF report, right? This is not me making stuff up. This is an actual email just sent to me. I can open it. You can actually see this is the financial report of Apple stock. Now, I'm not doing anything too fancy here. I'm just have a couple of basic information, description, things like that, and then a couple of price target that's come coming directly from Yahoo Finance API call. And this is the information can be essentially created because the Y Finance package gets data from Yahoo Finance Live. So there you go. That pretty much wraps up the demo. To finish this, you can just say exit, and then you are done. So this is the agenda framework that we're talking about, right? So you can essentially define any function that you want associated with trigger words. Have the intent processor recognize that you are actually executing a function that's related to some sort of API in your database. And then you need to ask the user to provide certain key value pair for the sample payload if you don't have any. And then on top of that, to actually execute the function on behalf of the user. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Hopefully, this is a fun episode for you. Hopefully, this kick off a fantastic new year for you to build all sorts of applications that's based on Agentic AI. Stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next episode.